Hey guys, it's Bro Uwak, and on Tuesday, Overwatch 2 finally did something right. What seems to be the longest stretch of just taking fat L's. Because on Tuesday, not only did we get an update where they brought us a bunch of hero changes that uh, felt kind of uh, unnecessary, we also got all the brand new Overwatch League Overwatch 2 skins, where some of them just look oh god awful. Goodness. Also, to all my British people that didn't get to see the London Spitfire skins, I'm sorry, the game glitched out. I don't know why they didn't have them made available at the time time of the recording but the final thing that also came on Tuesday other than myself was the official one punch man overwatch 2 skin collab and while we definitely will get into like the skins and the cosmetic items and the event as a whole for the very first collaboration in overwatch's history like true collaboration that this is pretty much a step in the right direction that the community has wanted overwatch to take for the longest time working outside of their bubble because in overwatch's six years of existing there's only been two collaborations collabs that has existed. The first which which I barely even count is the Blizzard World collaboration where they worked with other Blizzard IPs and made skins, which is just working with themselves. But the second one, which is a great collab, but not a traditional collab, is with the Breast Cancer Research Foundation where they brought Pink Mercy. So you bet your bottom dial that I was extremely excited when I saw this season three trailer that we were going to be getting a One Punch Man, Doomfist, and Sodoma skin later on in the season. But you could also bet that I was even more surprised to then see See, the Moomin Rider skin was going to be a challenge reward, but then on top of that, two additional skins in the form of Terrible Tornado with Kuriko and Genos with Genji. Not only were we getting multiple skins, but we were also getting skins from an IP outside of Overwatch. Blizzard finally realized that they're allowed to make money. <laughs> and boy, did they ever decide to make money. While going into the event, the overall sentiment was overwhelmingly positive for what what seems to be the first time in five months, there was still some negativity around the event, specifically just with the terrible Tornado Kuriko and Geno's Genji skin. Now, when it comes to the Kuriko skin, people were saying that this was an overpriced skin for what seems to be a recoloration of her classic skin, and I can understand that because, well, the idea of terrible Tornado is that she just has a black dress and a green wig. So they delivered that, obviously. The skin is not the problem. It's the fact that they're charging $19 or $1,900 Overwatch 2 coins for a recoloration of her classic skin. And when it comes to that, I, I can understand that sentiment because they feel like they're getting scammed or that their money really isn't going towards a skin that took the longest time to make. It did take a long time to make, I'm pretty sure, but compared to the other skins, like, come on now, this is the simplest out of the bunch. Maybe if they were to make it an epic skin and only charge a thousand Overwatch 2 coins or basically $10, people would be a little bit more positive with this skin. But but then we get to Gino Sketchy, and this is something that a lot of people also have an issue with because why does his hair look like that? In the anime, Gino's has blonde hair that droops over his forehead, and it basically looks like bed hair. But in the game, the skin has Genji with slick back hair, where we've seen it before with the young Genji skin, but that's just that's just not what Gino's looks like. Here's my theory as to why they gave him a different hairstyle than how he looks in the anime, and it's because they're trying to combine both elements of not only Genos, but also Genji, where Genji typically has slick back hair, but Genos doesn't, but Genos has blonde hair, and Genji doesn't. So they combined the two and gave him slick back blonde hair, but either way, it just don't, it don't look right. And I know it's nitpicking. Like, out of all things to nitpick out of this great event, for Genji's hair to be the one thing kind of seems ridiculous. But I will say, when you look at a different version of this Genos Genji skin, which I saw on Twitter, and they gave him Genos's hair, it looks so much better and way more natural and way closer to the Genos character. And that's important when you're making a collaboration with a different IP. Well, it's also a tough thing when trying to make a skin based on a different character because you still have to make the Overwatch character look like the Overwatch character because could you imagine on the battlefield getting Genji and like Farrah confused somehow? I, I know that's not a great example but they have to design the skin around the silhouettes and the assets uh, of the hero that we all can recognize. But come on Blizzard, I think we're still going to be able to recognize the cyber ninja that's climbing up the wall and throwing shurikens at us if you give him the bedhead hair. But besides the nitpicking from the internet and also myself admittedly, the rest of the event was just 
one gigantic W. I mean, the Sonoma Doomfist skin, he was born to be One Punch Man. Due to the fact that he did have the One Punch is all I need voice line, a lot of people were hoping that one day we would just maybe see the skin, but that's where the Overwatch team went above and beyond and killed one of the best elements of the collab, which is taking elements from the show and implementing them into the game. When you listen to the voice line, real fans will appreciate one of the most iconic lines in the One Punch Man anime. Or when you watch the Hylian show with him carrying his little plastic bag <laughs> from the supermarket, you know that that's a little characteristic of Sadama from the anime. Plus, the cyborg ninja Genji getting combined with the other cyborg from the anime is just those little things that, yes, it looks cool to normies that don't watch the One Punch Man anime, but if you're a huge fan of One Punch Man, you will truly appreciate this collaboration. And that's the best part about all this. It's not just a, well, yes, it, it, it is a cash grab, but do not get this twisted when I say this, but it is a cash grab to make this event, but they could have easily just brought the skins and that's it. But no, they actually took different elements from the show that were very small and only were like a couple of seconds or different scenes within the anime, but they brought it into a game because they were so iconic. Well, I'm not the biggest One Punch Man fan because truth be told, I just started watching it because of this collaboration and maybe that's why they brought this collaboration so that One Punch Man can get a little bit more viewers, but if they were to bring a Naruto skin collab, I would fall in love with that because I absolutely adore Overwatch, I adore Naruto, and I just know they would have tons of iconic voice lines and skins and other cosmetic items that would just make me really appreciate it because I'm a fan of both of the IPs, now they're coming together. And it's that possibility of future collabs that makes me so excited for Overwatch 2, not only because we're gonna possibly get even cooler skins down the road, but also based on how the Overwatch team is thinking because now they're actually open to the idea of working with people other than themselves where beforehand the original Overwatch 1 team never did that they never they thought that they could do best and that everyone else was stupid so why work with anybody else and you saw that in their game especially with even the community where we would give them feedback and they wouldn't listen and while that's still somewhat the case it at least makes me a little bit more hopeful for the future of Overwatch 2 maybe more so for the cosmetics because there's still issues with matchmaking and they hero balancing and things like that but at least at, at least they're changing their mindset at least at surface level so i don't know what kind of other skin collabs we'll see in the future probably something with microsoft because well if microsoft is going to own blizzard in a couple of months then we might see i'm hoping for the master chief soldier 76 skin i'm still holding out but we might have to wait for that because soldier 76 did get the moomin rider skin which i didn't even talk about that we got a free skin collab free Islander show free weapon charm just by simply playing Playing games, we didn't even need to complete a specific challenge. I'm Blizzard, Blizzard didn't go with this event, and I'm very happy with it. But I want your guys' thoughts on it. Did you think that this was a great event? Did you think this was a lame event? Did you think this was a mid event? I've been seeing a lot of people say it was a mid event, but I think it was a great first collab skin event. But hopefully, in the future, they can do even better because there's always growing pains with doing new things like this. But anyway, guys, I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching more Overwatch 2 videos to come and bye.